A winning mentality, I think, is, is just doing everything within your power to be as prepared as you can be every time you step on the floor, to giving your best effort every time you step on the floor, and trying to do everything you possibly can for your team every time you step on the floor. It has been called the golden era of colonial basketball with coach Andy Toole entering his fifth year as head coach for the Robert Morris University men's basketball team. Of those five years, he has taken his team to three straight NEC regular season championships, last year being the most recent, but it hasn't always been smooth sailing for Andy Toole and his Colonials. Last year, bad decisions made off the court left the Colonials with only eight players. Lost a couple of other freshmen from whatever mistakes they made. Our team stayed focused because, you know, we were a family from the beginning. And, you know, losing some of our brothers during the season kind of brought us even stronger together. And it, it, made us, it made us focus more on, you know, concentrating to details, making sure that we do everything the right way because, you know, we have no room for error. But we stuck in there, hung in there together, played hard, played smart. And, you know, we followed our details of what Coach Tool was asking for. You know, each and every guy that was on the roster when we were down to eight scholarship guys, they really came together. They really embraced their roles. Some of them even took on more responsibility. Some of them were playing out of position. Some of them were being asked to do things that, you know, they hadn't been asked to do before. But everybody was so willing to try and figure out anything they could to help us win that it made it really enjoyable. You know, it was a really good group to coach the last month and a half of the season. You know, everybody came to practice every day trying to get better, trying to learn, trying to improve. Um, and it was they were genuinely happy for each other. And so, um, you know, that came from inside the locker room. That came from Carvel Anderson and Anthony Myers Pate, our senior leaders, Lucky Jones, you know, one of our experienced juniors. And those guys really set the tone and everyone followed along. An average practice for the Robert Morris Colonials is uh, hard, you know. Nothing comes easy playing for, you know, a coach like Andy too, but he expects everything out of you. The practice is, is, is rough, brutal. <laughs> It's tough because there's different spots that, that the young guys wouldn't know, that the older guys going to take advantage of the young guys. Um, myself is that I would be the older guy that be trying to take advantage. I expect it to be fast. Um, just, uh, you got to learn quick because the game moves so fast, so you just got to pay attention to detail. The average practice, I would say, we get in about 30 minutes before practice, we stretch, do some shooting around to um, get us ready, get us get our blood flowing. And then it's just a lot of uh, competition drills, like whoever, like fight for minutes. So it's just a lot of competition, a lot of running. There's a lot of running after drills. Your body starts getting tired. It's a mindset either you're going to pick it up or you're going you're gonna to shut down. And we just trying to teach the young guys, don't shut it down, just keep pushing. And you're going to get tired a lot, so you got your body got to be strong and your mind. You gotta be mentally ready for practice every day. I mean, I think there's a lot of things that I attribute our success about. I, I think, you know, one, obviously you have to have talented players. I mean, if you don't have guys that have talent uh, and are willing to work, you're, you're never gonna be successful. And I think we've been fortunate to have really good coaches, you know, uh, in the eight years that I've been here. You know, guys that are really, um, excited about getting on the floor every day, guys that are providing great energy, guys that are coming up with new ideas on how to improve our team, guys that are selling the different pieces of our program to our players and to recruits so that we can continue to have success. The hardest thing I would say is keeping up with the pace and learning like the new system because it's way different from coming out of high school and you come to college and you got to learn a whole completely different system. So you just got to get accustomed to the game speed and what the coaches want. You know, our, our recruiting class is large. I think all the guys that we've brought in have shown an ability to do what we brought them here to do. Some of the challenges, obviously, with a big recruiting class is you're teaching a lot of guys all the way from the beginning. And so, you know, when we go on the floor and we have six returners and seven new guys, seven newcomers, um, it's hard when the newcomers outweigh the experienced guys. You know, I'll watch film and there'll be five or six of them on the floor at once. You know that a breakdown is going to occur because they're just they just don't know it yet. I finished playing college basketball 11 years ago. The mentality was you do what your coach asked you to do because he asked you to do it, and that's it. Uh, now it's kind of like, you know, well, why should I do it that way? Or why do I have to do it this way? Or what if I tried it this way? And so I think 
you know, constantly trying to sell and explain, you know, why what you're asking them to do is important and is going to help them, I think really allows them to understand that giving their best is going to benefit everybody. Well, I think the freshman class as a whole is impressive. They uh, working hard. They come and help the older guys. They compete with us in, in practice. So I guess they they getting us ready just as they something getting ready. You know, Marquise Reed is um, a freshman from uh, from Maryland who um, is a really talented scorer. He's a guy who just finds a million different ways to put the ball in the basket. He's got you know all the different shots you want a guard to have. He's got the pace that you want to play with. He's got great size. Um, you know, his challenge, and we talk about it every day, is him learning the intensity that's necessary on the defensive side of the floor. Elijah Minnie is one of our freshmen from right here in uh, the Pittsburgh area from Manesson, who's incredibly talented, six foot eight, um, great, great athlete, um, who's learning about consistency. You know, that just showing up isn't going to be good enough here. You know, showing up was good enough in high school, but at this level, you got to show up and you got to add some detail and some intensity to what you're doing. Those personally is the finish. The uh, all-time leading rebounder. You know, I'm 90 rebounds away from that. You know, I need 20 wins to be the all-time uh, winning this player in the in Robin Moore's history. Lucky's a guy who's had an incredible three-year career, and um, you know, we'd like him to have his best year this year. And I think he would like to do the same. He puts a lot of time in. He works extremely hard on his game. Uh, he's a guy who's incredibly versatile. He can play multiple positions. He can play as much bigger than he is. Um, but it's hard to be a senior because you're one of the guys who has to set the tone each and every day that you walk on the floor. And it's hard for you to have a bad day because everybody's looking at you to see how you respond to different things or how detailed you're going to be or you know whatever the case might be. And so um, he's being asked to shoulder a lot of responsibility. And uh, we're very excited and think that he's more than capable to handle all of it. We have you know three daily goals. You know The first one is sustained effort. The second one is positive body language, and the third one is um, be a great teammate and be coachable. And those are things we talk about each and every day that we should come with that mentality, that sustained effort to work as hard as we can for as long as we can. That positive body language, always anticipating something good's going to happen, and then being a great teammate and being coachable, I think you know speaks for itself. Um, for the exhibition game, we're just looking to, to see what spots our team is that's going to actually play. Like, see what players going to play together, see who's going to start, see who's going to be ready. Um, basically there to have fun, just another game to take serious. To me, that's what I think, the exhibition game, win or lose. I think we just got, we just going to go out there, play hard, and try, try to win. We got a lot of non-conference games against North Carolina, Georgetown, Clemson. So we play a lot of high majors, and that's what's going to put us on the map. We got to be able to compete in those games and win so we can make a name for ourselves. On November 14th at 7 p.m., the Colonials took on the Lafayette Leopards at the Charles L. Sewell Center. Elijah Minnie became the sixth player in program history to start his first collegiate game as a true freshman. Lucky Jones also looked to make his way into the record books. The Lafayette Leopards took a commanding lead in the first half that the Colonials were not able to recover from. RMU trailed at halftime 36-16, and Lafayette started the second half strong. David Apollon had nine points on the night, while Kayvon Stewart, Lucky Jones, and Marquise Reed each had ten points. The final was 77-50. This was the worst loss at home since a 94-67 setback to Ryder on February 19, 1996. People don't know how much work it takes until they actually get to college at D1 at that. So we just try and get better every day. My goal is to provide scoring. Cause I didn't score left last year, so that's what Coach Sue recruited me for. Our goals for the season is to try to get Defensive Player of the Year, um, try to be the best player possible, best teammate possible, um, continue being the, the best leader possible. You know, finishing strong, getting that that final that final step of getting to the NCAA tournament. The Colonials continued to struggle dropping games against North Carolina, Georgetown, and most recently, Buffalo. They are also left with the loss of senior Chuck Oliver, who will no longer be finishing the season with a Colonials team who seems to operate best when the odds are stacked against them. Their conference slate is set to begin on January 3rd against Mount St. Mary's. All of their losses before then will not matter as they will look to take the experiences they've gained to win an NEC championship and clinch a position in the NCAA tournament.